Hello everyone, Brian Mercier here, President of Catholic Truth, and I think Protestants might be right. They have said that the Catholic Church is the whore of Babylon, the harlot of Babylon, talked about in Revelation chapter 18, which makes war against God's people and spills her blood and many other things. And I've been searching the scriptures, I've been looking in the scriptures, and I think it might be true. There's a lot of passages that talk about the W-H-O-R-E in the Old Testament and the unfaithfulness to God and his people. And so I want to read to you a few passages just to show you what it says. In Isaiah 121, it says this, Purification of Jerusalem, how she has become a whore, the faithful city so upright, justice used to lodge within her, but now murderers. So you see that the Catholic Church clearly is not from God. And if you look at Ezekiel 1 and 2, 15 and 17, it says that the word of the Lord came to me, the son of man, make known to Jerusalem her abomination, saying, you played the whore because of your renown and lavish whorings on any passerby. You took the garments and made for yourself colorful shrines, and on them you played the W-H-O-R-E. So clearly we see here that the Catholic Church is the W-H-O-R-E of Babylon. I mean, it's, oh wait, Sorry, <laughs> my bad. Those two verses said Jerusalem, not the Catholic Church or the Vatican. <laughs> my bad. You know, I, I actually have a challenge for Protestants. Show me one place in the entire Bible where it says that the Catholic Church is the harlot of Babylon. Because the entire Bible says it's Israel and Jerusalem. And there are a few references to pagan Rome. But Jeremiah 3, 1 through 3 and 6 talks about uh, that you have polluted the land. He talks about Israel being a wife and an unfaithful wife and goes on to talk about how she polluted the land with her whoredom and says at the end, Israel, how she went up on every high hill and under every green tree and there played the W-H-O-R-E. Again and again and again and again. Hosea 4.12, Hosea 2, 1 through 13. I could name many passages that all say the same thing. It's Israel slash Jerusalem over and over and over again. Tons of references, but not one to the Catholic Church. So my challenge, my friendly challenge to Protestants is to find verses throughout the Bible that mention the Catholic Church, that show and mention the Vatican, when specifically Scripture says the opposite. It says the opposite. It says it's Jerusalem and Israel. But you say, oh, but it talks about bloodshed, you know, the bloodshed of the saints, and they, they killed the people of God. Well, clearly that refers to the Catholic Church. <laughs> Actually, in Scripture, that also refers to Jerusalem. It also refers to Israel. And in fact, if you look at 11, uh, Revelation 11, 8, it says their corpses will lie in the main street of the great city, which has the symbolic names of Sodom, and Egypt, where indeed our Lord was crucified. Was our Lord crucified in Rome? <laughs> or was he crucified in Israel? And if you need, like, blunt, in your face, smack you across the face evidence, check out what it says in Matthew 23, 29 through 38. I'm not going to read it all, but it says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those who sent you. How many times have I yearned to gather your children together as the hen gathers her young under her wings? But you were unwilling, so behold, your house will be abandoned, desolate. I sent you prophets and wise men and scribes, some of them you kill and crucify. Some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and pursue from town to town, so that there may come upon you all the righteous bloodshed upon the earth. From the righteous blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, the son of Barakiah, whom you murdered between the sanctuary of the altar. Amen. I say to you, all things will come upon this generation. Wow. Those were some stark condemnations from Jesus Christ to the to the Jews, to the Jewish leaders, to Israel, because they had, <laughs> God sadly tried to save them throughout their entire history, and they just killed the prophets. They killed the people who God sent them. It's even like the parable where he sent um, people and prophets, and they killed them all. And so finally in the vineyard, he sent his son saying, surely they will respect my son. And what do they say? This is the man who's going to inherit the vineyard. Let's kill him, and then we will inherit it. And over and over and over again, Jesus attributes all the blood and all the saints upon them, from Abel to Zechariah. Wow. So 
Jerusalem is not only called the W-H-O-R-E over and over and a harlot over and over in Scripture many times and is, is referred to as an unfaithful wife committing adultery against her husband. So we see the clear imagery here of that referring to Jerusalem again and again. But we also see that it refers to her. I mean, it says that the, uh, in Revelation 18, in her, the evil harlot, was found the blood of the prophets and the holy ones who have been slain on the earth. Where did this come from? Matthew 23. Jesus said the blood of the, the, the prophets and the holy ones were in Jerusalem. All of them, all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from Abel to Zechariah was in Jerusalem, which is why he condemns the Pharisees in Matthew 23 to hell. I mean, it's a serious, stark condemnation like we've never seen hardly in Scripture. And it's referring to to Jerusalem, to Israel, not to the Catholic Church, and not to the Vatican. Well, it talks about wearing purple and scarlet and gemstones. I mean, look at the Catholic Church. It's rich, and, you know, and, the, and it wears purple <laughs> and scarlet. Really? Is that your argument? These are really bad. These are really bad. And I only point these out because I want people to know that these arguments don't hold up compared to the clear biblical evidence. Look what it says here in Scripture in Exodus 28. It's talking about the breastplate, just for example, of the high priest. And it talks about him being made of gold and blue and purple and scarlet. And it's filled and lined with jewels and gemstones of all different kinds. Again and again, we see scarlet and purple referred to Jerusalem and gemstones referred to the Jerusalem and not to the Catholic Church. There's no reference, not one reference in the entire Bible, in the entire scriptures from the Old Testament to the New Testament that mentions the Catholic Church. These are all contrived from anti-Catholic bigotry and hate. Whereas you could say, okay, maybe, you know, there are a lot of people who persecuted God's people in history. You can't say, oh, it's just the Catholic Church, especially when the clear evidence specifically and unambiguously points to Jerusalem. And it calls Jerusalem the whore and the harlot. And it says, it mentions scarlet and purple multiple times in gemstones and, and jewels and that sort of thing. So all of these things point to Jerusalem where our Lord was crucified. Now, scholars say, and also the beast is like pagan Rome and Jerusalem, and they we know the early church, Jesus started the Catholic Church, and for 300 years there was open war on and off against the Catholic Church being persecuted. The earliest Catholics were persecuted for like three centuries. And we know that Jerusalem and Rome teamed up for a while to persecute Christians, to persecute God's people. So all of the evidence says Jerusalem. All of the evidence says Israel. In Rome, teaming up together, and you know the seven heads and the ten horns and the Caesars and all of the the imagery and that sort of thing. But the the last thing I'll leave you with is that I said all these things will take place in this generation. A generation is forty years, so that obviously refers to something in the first century, which was Jerusalem and pagan Rome, the Catholic Church. Where does it say the Catholic Church? People say it's the Vatican. The Vatican didn't even exist for like eighteen centuries or so. So. Definitely not the Vatican. <laughs> it can't be the Vatican. And I would challenge any Protestant to give me as much evidence from the Bible as I just gave you from the Bible. Not one or two quotes, not, oh, well, this could be this and this could be that and this and that. No, actual quotes from the Bible showing it's the Vatican and showing that it's the Catholic Church. Something that rivals all the quotes and scriptures that we gave. Because people like scripture, right? Protestants like scripture. We, that's why we gave scripture and we showed a case from scripture. So make your case from scripture. Thanks so much for watching this video today. We really appreciate it. And if you love this video and you like our content, you want to learn to defend your faith like no other, there's hardly any place on the planet that you can go to learn to defend your faith like here at Catholic Truth. So subscribe to our channel. Go back and watch our videos. They will teach you to love your faith, explain it, defend it, know it, and understand it on a deeper level. That's why we're here. We're not here for surface level teaching catechesis or apologetics. We're here for people who want to go deeper, want to learn more, want to grow, and want to be set on fire. Help you to love Jesus and be transformed by 
him. So please subscribe to our channel. Leave a comment if you ever have any questions. We're here for you. We want to help answer your questions. And if you would like us to come to your parish and teach, give a parish mission, apologetic seminars, Catholic school retreat, universities, anything, keynote speakers, we are here for you. Check out our website at catholictruth.org. Please support our summer fundraising campaign. If you think apologetics and evangelization is so important, what we do, hardly anyone on the planet does. And as much as we do, Hardly anyone on the planet does. So please, we ask you to support this. It's so important. Please give $25 a month, even 15, 10, 50, 100. But all of it goes back to the salvation of souls and to building up our church. As St. Francis did in the 12th century, 13th century, so we are doing today in trying to rebuild God's church. And lastly, follow us on social media below and pray for us as we're always praying for you. God bless you.